Um, it's 18 minutes past six. Now, ministers have struck a deal to restart the UK's commercial production of carbon dioxide. This is after warnings the shortage could disrupt food supplies. But is it the end of the crisis? Well, Nina is at a brewery in Salford for us. Nina, can you tell us, is this going to fix things? Yes, good morning, uh, Sally and Dan, from the Seven Brothers Brewery in Salford, where, you've guessed it, Seven Brothers set up a place to make beer. And we've had a bit of a crash course, haven't we, over the past few days on the intrinsic value of carbon dioxide, which we've maybe traditionally seen as the baddie of the chemical world, how important it is to our food and drink supply chain. Let me just talk you through here, which is just one element. So these fermenters, that the water that the malt go into, carbon dioxide is used to purge them, so to cleanse them, to make sure the beer doesn't go off in the brewing process. Over here, you've got the tins that your beer goes into, and the packaging there, you might not know that carbon dioxide is used to go into the tins once again to make sure your beer doesn't go off. And just have a look over here where the bar area is. Every time you have a pint pulled for you in your local, carbon dioxide is used to literally help to push that liquid into your pint glass. That's why it's so important. And this is just one tiny business that relies on it so heavily. Uh, let's just have a look at why there's been so much tension around the supply of carbon dioxide. First of all, we've been talking, haven't we, since last week about uh, the wholesale price of gas that our providers are having to pay to get it to us. That has more than doubled since January because of increased demand and lower supply. Prices have got so high that some businesses haven't been able to afford to function. Now, one of them was CF Industries, an American company that makes fertilizers here in the UK. Their byproducts of carbon dioxide is about 60% of our national source. Now we know, don't we, how widely carbon dioxide is used in beer brewing, in fizzy drinks, meat and salad packaging. One industry group said if things didn't change by yesterday, we could be seeing gaps on the shelves within the next few days. That deal was struck late last night, a multi-million pound deal for the next three weeks to get that carbon dioxide production up and running again. But it's thought there could be a three day lag before that happens. And so it's an incredibly anxious time still for businesses. Businesses like Michael's, uh, good morning. Uh, Michael processes chicken and within that process, he uses carbon dioxide, don't you, to keep it nice and fresh. Um, so tell us last night when you heard the news of the deal, what was your reaction? Um, well, I, was, I was certainly relieved, but uh, I didn't know the details of the deal. And um, so we need a little bit more detail. We know when is supply going to come back on stream? Uh, and when will I be able to get my supplies of carbon dioxide? So at the moment, where are you up to with it? Well, at the moment, we've, we've had a supply in yesterday, yeah. but that's only going to last just over a week. Okay. Um, so we, we, you know, I need to know when my next delivery is going to be. So this three-day lag is really significant for Very you Very significant then. to me, yeah. Um, how important is it then in your packaging process? Just talk me through, if you've got a chicken that you're packaging, you don't have CO2, what happens to that chicken? Um, if I can't put CO2 in the, in the packaging, then my shelf life drops to about seven or eight days, um, which makes a massive effect on the whole supply chain. Um, also, my customers won't be able to put that, that chicken on the shelf as long as normal, uh, and consumers will be affected. Um, when they buy the chicken, they won't be able to, they'll have to eat it fairly quickly. They won't be able to leave it in the fridge for a few days uh, before having a meal. And as we're learning fast, if there are fewer chickens out there, the prices rocket, don't they? What contingency plans is your business now having to consider in case this does happen again? Um, this is the second time it's happened in, in over three years. So now we're now looking at putting extra tanks in to hold CO2 on site to give my, my business more flexibility. You know, possibly two to three weeks supply on site uh, rather than having to rely on my supplier. Which all costs money, Michael, doesn't it? It's extra yes. outlay that you haven't yeah. planned around. The government keeps telling us, don't panic about Christmas. Everything's going to be fine. You're laughing. Why is that? I, well, this has come out of the blue, this, this CO2, completely out of the blue. So it, it, it does give you the jitters. We're now concerned. CO2 is even more crucial at Christmas with my turkey business. Uh, because we, we have a lot of thousands of turkeys to, to uh, pack for Christmas. If I haven't got CO2, I, I, don't, know, I don't know how we'll manage. Uh, You're genuinely concerned about a shortage of turkeys on Christmas Day? I am concerned, mm. and um, the, our only other option would be to freeze those turkeys, which I don't want to do. No, I want not to provide a nice fresh turkey for people at Christmas. Yeah. And Michael's is just one business in Cheshire, 
of tens of thousands up and down the country. And you've got to place this in the context of the shortage of HGV drivers, uh, the shortage of workers, difficulties at the border post-Brexit. The government is seeking to reassure businesses that it will be a smooth winter, that this is a temporary problem. But businesses like Michael struggling to believe that at the moment, as are consumers who are wondering the point at which the cost will get passed on to them. Nina, thanks very much. We'll talk to you again very soon. Are you ready? Ministers have struck a deal to restart the UK's commercial production of carbon dioxide after warnings that the shortage could disrupt food supplies. Well, we're not going to talk to Gary about this. We are going to talk to Nina, who's at a brewery not far from here. She's in Salford. Morning, Nina. <laughs> Honestly, Gary, call yourself a Salfordian. This is a Salford brewery. You should be interested. Yeah, good morning from the Seven Brothers Brewery. Things you might expect at a brewery. We've got the kegs there. We've got the sacks of malt. We've got the tins that the beer will end up in. But look at this. This is what everybody is talking about at the moment. Carbon dioxide. That was a full tank, but it is swiftly reducing. And I just want to show you how important carbon dioxide is to this one small business. And then just think about that replicated up and down the country. This is Matt and Harry. Morning, fellas. What they're doing is they're taking these cans. The carbon dioxide goes in through these little grey pipes. And that basically purges the cans of any oxygen that would make the beer go off. So it's crucial at that point. And these are the fermenters. It's a similar process when the malt and water go in to these big tankers. They have to be purged of any oxygen to make sure the beer stays fresh. Carbon dioxide is also then used to carbonate the liquid. And then at the point when it comes out of the pump, when you buy it at the pub, it's used to literally push it out into your glass. So it is a vital part of so many businesses. Let's just remind ourselves of why there's been so much tension around the production of carbon dioxide and the access to it. We've been talking this week about the problems around the wholesale gas supply, so that impacts what providers pay for their gas. That's more than doubled since January. And prices have got so high that some industries just couldn't afford to function. Now, CF Industries is one of those businesses. It's an American company that makes fertilizers. One of their big byproducts is carbon dioxide, which they then sell in, supplying 60% of the carbon dioxide market in the UK. That is huge. So when they struggle, so do the markets beyond them. As we now know, their CO2 is used widely in places like this, in brewing, in fizzy drinks, in meat and salad packaging. And one industry group warned that within a few days, if a deal wasn't struck with CF, we would be seeing shortages on the shelves. That deal was struck late last night, basically a multi-million pound bailout with the government backing that business so that CO2 can remain in the market. It's a three-week deal, it's short-term, it's an emergency measure, but there is an expectation that there'll be a three-day lag before production can resume. So it's an incredibly anxious time for businesses like this one. Let's speak to Keith at one of these seven brothers and four sisters, they don't get a mention. Um, you have... <laughs> A last-minute reprieve then in terms of the CO2, but your tank is emptying fast. It does empty quick, yeah. We have uh, between two and four weeks' supply of CO2. Uh, so last night's decision, uh, last night's uh, bailout deal, uh, couldn't have come, come, any, come any sooner, really. We, uh, you know, a three-day three delay uh, could have had major impact on the business. Really? And we understand that businesses will have to pay a bit more now in order to secure that CO2 flow. Not necessarily you, but your supplier logic dictates that that could be passed on to you. How difficult would that be at the moment? Yeah, if, uh, if our CO2 costs um, do increase, it'll certainly impact our margin, that's for sure. Margins which are being squeezed at yeah, the moment. Every, Talk every, to me step, about every that. part of the process, yeah. yeah. In what areas, though, because you're, you know, shortage of HGV drivers, shortage in the labour market, you're yeah. feeling it in all those areas? In all areas, yeah, from uh, our major suppliers, from things like cardboard, uh, our malted barley, it, it, the, the, the raw ingredients for, for every single beer that we make, um, straight through to the uh, supply chain, um, HCG drivers like you just mentioned then. Um, it's been really difficult. We've, had, we've missed a few deadlines because of uh, the shortage of drivers, uh, both to our suppliers and um, to our customers, I should say, and our suppliers delivering to us and as well. And even the cardboard you were saying that yeah. your beer is delivered yeah. in. One maybe, maybe positive to come out of this, you were looking to carbon capture your own CO2 to make yourselves more independent in crises like this. Has that accelerated that process? It has, yeah. We're going to bring those plans forward. There are ways of, uh, in, in the brewing process, uh, a one byproduct 
uh, of the fermenting process is uh, release of CO2. So there are ways of capturing that uh, and getting to add it to the, the reserves that we already have. So we're going to accelerate that in our journey to become a little bit more, to become carbon neg a negative business. Yeah. So that is the silver lining to this, is it? Acceleration of carbon neutrality, which is fascinating. And 50 staff they've got here coming off furlough at the moment, at the end of the month. That shortage of HGV drivers, cardboard boxes, as we were saying, that aren't being delivered. I can't stress enough what a difficult time this is for so many businesses. What they need is certainty, reliability in the elements that make up their business, and they're just not getting that at the minute. And that volatility is set to continue as we come out of the pandemic. And ultimately, for me and you, the consumers, it will not be a surprise if it impacts us through, number one, lack of availability, and number two, an increase in prices. So the government saying we will get over this as we head into the winter, but it could be a long and expensive winter ahead. Nina, thanks very much. I have a feeling we will be talking mm. about this for the next few yeah, weeks.